welcome to another in the series of videos about the Epistles of Paul, specifically focused on the format of letters. This video is by Susan Harris. Paul wrote in a very clear style. His writing showed tremendous understanding of both who letters were written to, the rhetoric styles recommended by the great rhetoricians of Aristotle, Cicero, and uh, Quinlan, as well as Jewish writing and normal business writing inside of Greco-Roman. He also was quite aware of the styles of other Greco-Roman philosophers and their works and used some of those in Thessalonians to try to spice up his, his writing that shows great skill and great ability in his writings. Now, one of the things we're not always clear on is how emotions played in Paul's epistles. In the Thessalonians, practically drips with the emotions of a pastor who is speaking. Is this reasonable for us to see in the writings of Paul? We'll go into that today. And our final thing was to look at the epistles versus Acts, to see Acts as a historiographic no novel or a historiographic writing, perhaps that's right. But how is that different than the histories for today? Well, let's pick up on part four, the emotions in Paul's epistles. How do we explain this? And many of this comes from a delightful outline of the same material by Lyle J. Story. Okay. Lyle says, pulls out several of the people with the importance of emotions. He states that Matthew Elliot says in The Faithful Feelings, everything we do, we say and think is in some sense emotional. We enjoy it. We dislike it. We just don't care. We describe our experiences in ourselves by describing how we feel. Life without emotions would be black and white. So that says that we, if we look without emotions, perhaps we're closing one eye. The Western approach disdain, approaches that disdain emotions. For many, for example, many Bible scholars argue that agape love is not a feeling, that there's no feeling about it. Someone ox exhortations pray and others will be, develop Christ-like control. Get restraint over your emotions your, and desires. Pray that you will have a deep Christ-like joy. Deep internal, not external happiness that is affected by circumstances. This really doesn't match the type of control in the New Testament. The New Testament shows weeping by Christ, shows anger, shows many things by Christ. Are these negative influences that are likely to believe into, into sin? Is joy primarily a deep inner theological knowledge? Tata and Essene said in their book, emotions are one of the least reliable, most influenced. God made emotions. So whether we cry, whether we laugh, whether we anger, what matters is our control. And Paul seemed to have exquisite control, and sometimes, although it seems he and Barnabas, as we started out in Acts 15, lack some control in their extreme anger. Another comment by Clapper, emotions are a crucial part of human existence. Some would even say they are the defining aspect of human life. Because of this, the theology, the church reflections of God on God and human must in every generation come to grips with affectivity. Theology must understand the causes, the nature, and the importance of felt experience within religious life. Is the greatest range of scriptural language about the heart dispensable orientation which only clouds the real message of the gospel, or does this message, emotional message itself contain and constitute a large message, measure of the true message? 1 Thessalonians 2.17 is clearly has a preponderance of emotional vocabulary in this text. Much desire, much hope, much joy, much rejoicing, much 
wreaths of pride, glory, internal pressure, encouragement, fear, thanksgiving, positive remembrance, longing to see. This really comes to us as the very fabric of the text and cannot be separated from Paul's prepositional or deliberate totem language. In fact, the ability to persuade either uh, based on a future benefit or on honor and shame, Aristotle says, taps into the emotions. Therefore, emotions has to be part of the argument and in an honest speaker, emotions is part of the whole thing. Typically, pastors and scholars approach Paul and other biblical authors with the prepositional mode, justification, salvation, divine choice, but negate emotions by way of admission. Please, don't. Take a look at it. Take a look at exactly what the emotions that Paul is doing, is saying in his text. His very soul appears in Thessalonians. Take a look at it and discover how that affects your words. Well, thank you for this uh, listening to this third part. And in the fifth part of this series, we will look at Acts, whether it's a story, biography, historical novel, or something else. Thank you for listening.